Hi folks, the point of this video is to use the Ronskian to prove a very important theorem we'll be needing very soon in differential equations. The theorem we're going to use to prove our new theorem is found in the textbook in section 4.1 and it states the following. If f and g possess first derivatives on an open interval i and their Ronskian is non-zero for at least one x in that interval, then we're guaranteed that the set of functions f of x and g of x is linearly independent on that interval i. This is what's known as a conditional statement in mathematics. It has a specific if-then construction. If these two conditions are met, then we're guaranteed that this condition follows. It's entirely possible, however, as we've seen in class, that the set of functions is linearly independent, but the Ronskin is zero for every single x in the interval we care about. Here's the theorem we want to show. We want to show that if f is differentiable on the open interval i, and f is not identically zero on that interval, then we're guaranteed the set of functions f of x and x times f of x is linearly independent on that interval i. So how are we going to prove this theorem? Well, we're going to assume that our function f satisfies the two criteria in the if part of the theorem. In other words, we'll assume that f is differentiable on that open interval i. And two, we'll assume that f of some particular value, x naught, is not zero for some x naught in that interval. So we assume those two characteristics about our function f. And what do we need to show? We need to show that the set of functions f of x comma x times f of x is linearly independent. We're going to show this set is linearly independent by using the theorem from chapter 4. So let's take a look at these two functions a little more carefully. We're assuming that f itself is differentiable. And since the function x is differentiable, we know that the product x times f of x is differentiable. In fact, we even know what the derivative of x times f of x is going to look like. We can use our product rule. The derivative of x times f of x is the derivative of the first function times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And I can simplify the derivative of x I know is 1. And so I get f of x plus x times f prime of x. Now all that remains to be done is to compute the Ronskian of these two functions. In the first column goes the function f and its derivative. And in the second function goes the function in the second column goes the function x times f of x and its derivative. And so we take the determinant. We take f of x times this quantity and subtract that from f prime of x times this quantity. We're going to get f of x squared a plus x times f times f prime, but then a minus x times f times f prime. And so that's our Ronskian. But remember, one of the things we assumed about our function f 
is that f of x naught isn't zero. Well, that means that f of x naught squared isn't zero either. So that means that our Ronskian is not zero for at least one x in the interval we care about. So by that theorem in chapter 4, I can conclude that f of x and x times f of x are linearly independent. Which is exactly what I wanted to show.